despite the confidence that the conference package that you thought that seemed to be pretty obvious for the uh, chip what did you say? Yeah, my confidence has got to be high. If I'm if I'm not confident, I'm I'm probably going to struggle a lot because, um, as someone else said earlier, I'm I'm playing right on the baseline. I'm playing aggressive tennis, and if you're playing aggressive tennis but not confident, <laughs> you know it's going to look ugly. And that's where the critics come in and say I'm playing it wrong. But sometimes that's just a lack of confidence. Right now, I have confidence. I'm back on my favorite surface. You know, in the states, uh, a tournament I've won before. So there's no reason not to be confident. And I just. Um, I just sort of executed tonight, you know, with that confidence. It makes it a lot easier. But speaking of friendships on tour and Robert Henry being in the media recently for a testing positive for a performance enhancing drug, mm -hmm. what's your take and have you rallied behind him? Yeah, I've talked to him. I wrote a letter uh, to help with his appeal process. He's, um, you know, he's a great guy. I grew up in juniors with him. I go way back to, I think I played him for the first time when we were about 14 years old. Always been just a generous and great guy and there's no I know there was no ill will in, in what he did. He was trying to get over jet lag. He took something that he thought was completely legal, and um, he, he wanted to. You know, he basically just wanted to get over jet lag, and he didn't. He wasn't doing anything performance enhancing, so to to put him out for a year and um, for all you know, for all intents and purposes, end his career, I think is pretty harsh. I don't know all the details of the appeals process and everything uh, about it, but I do think it's harsh. I'd love to see him back on tour. He's a great guy, and that's a terrible way to end his career because I was faced at times with, with my career possibly ending not on my terms, and for him to, to possibly end his not on his terms is, is unfair after a career that he's put a lot of hard work into, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and, and to go out this way is I don't think it's fair, um, especially when we got a guy playing in this tournament that I don't, you know, that I think is, uh, has done a lot worse. Um, you talked a lot about working with the younger players and your friendship with them. How do you see the game changing as they're going to get older and, and be uh, developing their games more? How do you see the game going? Yeah, the game, it's, it's incredible to see how much the game changes because, well, first of all, when I was on tour, when I first started on tour, I feel like I was kind of one of the bigger guys. Now I feel like I'm uh, I'm a shrimp in the locker room. You know, I'm walking up against Del Potro, Isner, Kevin Anderson. I mean, these guys are huge. I'm, I'm for the years I played on the Davis Cup team. I was the smallest guy on the team. The game has just gotten bigger and stronger, and the athletes get better. Um, that's just the way all sports are going. You know, you see in football, you know, linebackers used to be 180 pounds. Now linebackers are 240, running four three forties. You know, it's just um, it, it, the game just gets bigger and stronger and faster and. Um, people weren't playing the way I play, the way Roger played years ago, the way Nadal plays with that much power and aggression. Um, we'll see if it makes for possibly shorter careers because guys are playing with so much power and it takes a little bit of the finesse out, but um, the best thing about it is the game keeps improving and that's why I think it's unfair to compare generations or to compare eras because no matter who it is at the time, they're the best ever because they're the game gets 5% better every year, it seems like. So when Roger Federer was number one in the world um, for the fourth year in a row, he was a much better player than he was that first year. And um, you know, Leighton Hewitt was number one in the world. Five years later, he was number 20 in the world, but I guarantee he was a better player. That just shows how much the game improved. And um, these kids, you know, in, in five years when I'm sitting back watching, if I'm commentating or if I'm just uh, talking about them, I'm going to have to be the first one to admit that they're better than I ever was. You know, they're, the, the game just keeps getting better and we're all doing our best and the game is, you know, it, it, it's, it's just the improvement is incredible and I see it all the time. I think about how, how I played when I was first here, when I won my, my first title here. I'm a, I'm a whole lot better than I, than I was then and, and back then I was ranked a lot higher. It just, it just keeps getting better and it's getting a lot faster and it's getting tougher and tougher to to, to compete out here, but I'm, I'm doing my best to continue improving with it. Last question. James, you've alluded at the end of your Kendrick answer to uh, Wayne Odesnik, who's mm -hmm. playing his first ATP main draw mm -hmm. here since his suspension. Mm -hmm. You talk about the closeness of the American guys also. What sort of is his status in American tennis right now? Is he just completely excluded or what's... Uh, is he to... American? Yeah. I don't even know. <laughs> um, no, he doesn't... Uh, I wouldn't say he's, he's at our dinner table too often. He's at our car games too often. He's... Uh, um, I actually don't think I've I've really um, said a whole lot to him since he's been back. Uh, you know, I, I I didn't agree with what he did, and um, as I think he said, I, I saw some article about him where he even admitted that he probably wasn't that close to a lot of the Americans before before uh, all this happened, and now that it has happened, it's probably even more of a divide. So.
Um, he, yeah, he's never really been uh, been that uh, on the on the forefront of any of our minds as as a guy to call and really support and go out and cheer for. Because I, like I said, you know, those kids were out there cheering for me, and can't say I've ever seen Wayne uh, doing the same for for any of us. Thank you.